Wednesday night means we get a chance to talk to the best option on the ballot in New South Wales at this upcoming election is none other than Mark Latham, of course, leader of One Nation. Support him. I'm open about it. I don't muck around. I'm not going to be subtle. I need more of this bloke in the New South Wales Parliament. He joins us now Thanks, in the Paul. Man Cave. How are you? Thank you very much. Now, fresh back from one of my favourite parts yes. of the world, Tweed Heads, Twin Town Services Club. Mwah, mwah. More yeah, of that, I remember please. you well, not only in the pokey lounge, but the bistro <laughs> and the smoking area. Correct. <laughs> schnitzel, schnitzel, schnitzel for the fat bloke. All right, a few things to get to. So what about today? We learned that school kids have to learn the Uluru Statement from the Heart. Now, this is not, you know, in the Constitution. It's not a founding document. This is just a decision that's been made, and it shows us how instantly, you know, a lobby group, straight through to your classroom. Well, it's a piece of political propaganda. Uh, it's 100 or so Indigenous activists who got together at the old Ayers Rock Uluru and put together this document. And, and, and many parts of the document are dangerous for the education system because we know about the voice and we know about treaty. And the third element is what they call truth-telling, which is actually a rewriting, an Orwellian concept, truth-telling in the hands of government, a rewriting of Australian history to say we're all dreadful white people who are racist and the colonisation of the country was a complete disaster. I mean, we've set up the most successful nation in the world and to settle Australia the way they did 1788 onwards was one of the great achievements of humankind um, in, in, a, in a pretty barren and, and harsh continent. Uh, the Australian achievement stands out, I think, with the American achievement um, for successful nations that uh, have emerged in the last 200 years. So um, school kids don't need to learn the Uluru Statement. They need to learn the basics of Australian history, literacy, numeracy, science, geography, proper history, of course, and to inject this political propaganda, um, you know, it's sort of our equivalent of Black Lives Matter to do this. And anyway, Paul, it hasn't been written into the Constitution. If, if the referendum is defeated, which I expect it will be, then it's um, a unsuccessful political proposition. Why would kids have to memorise that? I mean, uh, we're in a New South Wales election. I'll give them a couple of dozen unsuccessful political propositions on the 26th of March, and the last thing kids need to learn is that sort of politics when the basics have gone missing so badly in the system. But also, when you think about how informed you were before you went back into politics about education, the position you've been for the past four years, being able to go over all the detail, look everyone in the eye, pull everyone up on their mistakes, how does this just so easily make it from lobby group to classroom? Well... The Education Minister, Sarah Mitchell, is weak and ineffective yeah. and woke. And when they put this on a desk, she pretty well does what the Education Department says. The Education Department uh, in New South Wales um, had uh, a special room set up in the department for this uh, healing and had Indigenous patterns and all that. Like, the virtue signalling is just appalling. Mm. And um, they fall for this every time when we all know in New South Wales, you want a serious issue for Indigenous kids? You want a serious thing that's going on? 3% of the students at Walgett High School attend the school for nine days or more in a fortnight. That nine days or more is thought to be the threshold by which you can get a successful, viable education. Walgett High has only 3% of the students there for nine days in a fortnight. And that level of truancy and absenteeism just wrecks the school. I mean, you see some sad things in public life, but last year when I went out to Walgett, or say Burke High School, and you walk along the corridor and there's blackened classroom after blackened classroom, not enough kids to warrant turning on the lights that day, schools supposed to have 150, maybe they had 20 or 30 there, you realise that the education system, for all its potential, I mean, you want to get out of poverty, whether you grow up in a public housing estate or places like Walgett, education is your, uh, your, your ladder of opportunity, your way out, and uh, if you're not at school, well, uh, there's no hope. So, you know, that's the real issue in Indigenous education. Does Sarah Mitchell address that? Of course not. Does Georgina Harrison, the head of the Education Department, all their Indigenous patterns in their office in Parramatta? No. They cleanse and clear their conscience with this virtue signalling instead of addressing the real tragedies of why Indigenous kids in those places have got absolutely no hope in life. Obviously, in the middle of an election campaign, politicians say lots of silly things, but I've got to say, what about Dominic Perrottet today? Um, banks must pass on the interest rates uh, to home savers and not pass them on to mortgage holders. 
he says that he just walks into Canberra and says, sure, we'll sign up to The Voice, doesn't talk to his cabinet about it, was happy for the boss of clubs New South Wales to get the biscuit for saying that uh, he was making decisions with his Catholic gut, only to go on the ABC and say, oh, yes, I made a decision with my Catholic exactly gut. exactly what he'd done, yeah, so very strange. But look, Perrottet's a long way behind in this election. They've been a dreadful government. They've been in for 12 years when the failures in the school system, the fastest falling school academic results in the world, not just Australia, the world, uh, the problems in the energy sector, where AEMO and internal government documents are forecasting blackouts, an absolute destroyer of investment confidence that we can't keep the lights on after the closure of Araring in 2025. You know, these are huge problems that Perrottet hasn't gone within cooey of fixing. I asked Perrottet at the budget estimates about the forecast of blackouts post 2025, and he said he'd have to take some advice. I mean, this is urgent work not just for three years from now, but for investor confidence and the viability of the New South Wales economy. I followed up with a question to say what was the advice and he referred me to something Matt Keane had said. Yeah. So Perrottet on the big issues goes missing and he's now engaged in populist catch-up, desperately trying to salvage their electoral position, bash the clubs one day, bash the banks today. They'll be on to petrol bowsers tomorrow, won't they? But also it's that thing where... You know, all the lovies on Twitter and Channel 2 and the Sydney Morning Herald and basically the Liberal Party strategy in New South Wales is, oh, don't do what the feds did, uh, let's sort of teal the party, get a bit of love from the Herald and we'll be OK. Um, all day, every day, the, the pokey stuff is, is in the Herald, though they've got some sort of objection to the people who run around in club world, like Twin Towns. But... You would think that the elites who want to change society for the better would know what you just said about the school standards compared to the rest of the world. That that would be an urgent, upfront, come on, future generations, get on with it. Instead, you're going to say it here, everyone watching's going to care, but we know what the front page tomorrow is going to be, and it's some version of pokies again. Well, you know, if you live a comfortable life on Sydney's lower North Shore and your kids go to, you know, fairly well-provided uh, non-government schools and you really don't ever visit places like Walgett and Burke mm. and you're happy to get a view of the Indigenous flag flying on the Sydney Harbour Bridge and you think that's social justice, well, that level of delusion would lead you to avoiding the, the big issues. I mean, Chris Minns is going around picking low-hanging fruit, hasn't got real solutions. Perrottet is desperately trying to catch up, implementing teal policies on things like our community clubs. But the two big issues that are serious for the future of this state are barely mentioned in the campaign. The media is not putting the pressure on. Where is your solution to the fastest falling school academic results in the world? Where is your plan to keep the lights on in New South Wales post the closure of Araring? They're the two big questions, burning issues for this election campaign. And if you don't address those, you're not serious. Always good to have you, mate. See you again next week. Okay, Mark Latham. All right, coming to a club new year, Philip.